Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Prism Football No Huddle Edition. 10 boxes, half of a case, pick your team number one, and $500 break credit being given away if you follow these instructions right here. Also, if you won spots in the filler that we did, and if that gives you an even number of teams, that also includes and also makes entries as well. All right, so big thanks here. Oh, first of all, Victor got the double last spot, Mojo, Ravens, Texans, before we pull the remaining teams for the filler. Thanks, everyone, for getting there. Appreciate it. All right, and there, there's the case of no huddle right here. I think we're going we're gonna to save the other half for some other time or for something else, ladies and gentlemen, but thanks to the people who got into the first half here. But plenty of other football on jazbeescasebreaks.com if you're looking for that. All right, so we've got 10 on the left side and 10 on the right side. All right, and we'll go 1, 2, 3 for the left side, 4, 5, 6 for the right side. Two, we'll do the left side here and then we'll save these for some other time. Maybe there'll be some future mixers or maybe we'll run this picker team back at some point or fillers or whatever, but at the moment we won't be reposting it. But plenty of other football on the website. Check it out, jazbeescasebreaks.com. And away we go. We were talking a little about what would Rex do if uh, I guess if you're new to Jaspies and you're watching this video, you're like, what? <laughs> who the hell's Rex? Well, be involved in the live stream, ladies and gentlemen. You'll know who Rex is. But I was asking what he would do if he was in an elevator with Adam Sandler and he was like, empty elevator, just him. He was like, I'd totally fanboy out. I'd... But I don't think he would. I think he said I would thank him for making me laugh for all these years. I think, I don't, I think that's a good response. Yeah, don't do the quote stuff. Rex says Dana Carvey and the Dana Carvey say he doesn't mind people quoting his stuff over and over. What Dana Carvey stuff would people be quoting? I can't think. Of. But it throws him for a loop when someone gets an obscure quote they actually forgot about, and that'll get him to talk, stop and talk longer. All right, good luck, everybody. Do all card, yeah, all cards ship in this. Of course, we're looking for any of the exclusive no huddle parallels of the sort of top tier rookies in this set. All right, so these are not numbered, by the way. I'm not sure we'll find some numbered cards. Is there an auto in each box? Find one exclusive prism auto per, per box on average. Oh, church stuff. Oh, right, right, right. He probably gets uh, church lady stuff and and um, Wayne's World stuff. There's Michael Vick to 15 going to Scott and the Falcons. I like the lower numbered parallels you can get out of here as well. Ty Chandler to 15 for the Vikings. That'll be for Chris. Harry McLaurin, a little color match there, kind of, to a 50. Well, I guess the commander's now, never mind. That goes to Victor. Sorry, force of habit. Garrett Wilson for the Jets. And there's our autograph. And it is Jeremy Ruckert. Bring the Ruckert. Rucker Park. That's in New York, right? Uh, that goes to Scott and the New York Jets. Won that team in the filler. Let's shake Ferguson to 35. For Dallas, that'll be for Chris M. I think that's the only Chris in this break, right? And we've got Mark Andrews to 79 for the Purple Birds. That's for Victor.
I want to say, if I remember correctly, I want to say like I've heard interviews where um, Jerry Seinfeld says that if you ever run into him in the in the street and people ask for an autograph or if they can take a picture, he said he'll usually say no, but he will stop them and say, do you want to have a conversation? <laughs> and that really throws people and usually he gets rid of them. <laughs> That's what he says. I do not remember that. Massive head wound, Harry. You got no when to hold them, no when to fold them, no when to walk away, no when to run. You better count your money when you're sitting at the table. There'll be time enough for counting before the game is done. Sorry, Kenny. Uh, Miles Garrett to 50. Cleveland Browns, Sam Howell, and Khalil Shakir at 35. Sam Howell for Victor. Maybe we can find some parallels of this guy, but there's his base rookie, or maybe an auto. He's QB1 as far as we know it. There's Shaq Leonard to 79. There will be time enough for counting before the deal is... There will be time enough for counting before the... It's been a minute or two since I've listened to that song all the way through, but... My dad likes Kenny Rogers. He'll listen to Kenny Rogers every once in a while. There's Josh Pascal. Was he part of it? Oh. <laughs> I don't think so. No, he wasn't. Josh Pascal, not a gambler. It's gold, goes to the Lions. That'll be for Scott. And there's Josh Allen to 15. Buffalo, Chris. Right, right, right. I, yeah, that's the theme, right? Don't, don't, don't count the money in front of the people. In front of people, there'll be time enough for counting. Yeah, especially in the old west, you know, you might get a, you might get a old six shooter pointed at you in some places. Go on, skin that smoke wagon. What's that from? Everyone know what that movie is from? Teddy and I were just talking about it earlier today. I think that's the line. I said, throw down.
spot on impression if I do say so myself. You got to know when to hold him? I don't know if he's one of those guys. I forget who the other ones were. I just remember it was Jameson Williams. That was part of the Lions gambling scandal. Maybe, no, that's for the guy for the Bears. We got a red Kenny Clark to 50 for the Packers. That's going to be Scott. Ooh, Brock Purdy. Ooh, piece of candy. We got uh, Rashad White to 79. That is for Aaron Salinas and the Buccaneers. Brock Purdy's going to go to Devin and the Niners. Got the Niners in the filler. Hmm. Thirty-five. Well, that's that's the natural flow of inflation, Rex. There was at one point someone said, "A quarter? No one's gonna pay a quarter to see the moving pictures." Oh, what are we gonna call them? Uh, quarter Lodians instead of Nickelodeons. That's a good one. That that joke would have killed eighty years ago. There's Travis, uh, no, sorry, Treston Ebner, not Travis Ebner, Treston Ebner. Goes to Michael and the Bears. No, no, no one with the, no one with the answer to the movie trivia, huh? That was a uh, Tombstone. I think it was Kurt Russell talking to Billy Bob Thornton early in the movie Tombstone. I said, throw down. Go on, man. Go on. Skin that smoke wagon. 78 out of 79. Victor and the, uh, the Texans. Next ball. Your grandfather freaked out when gas went up by 25 cents. Went up to 25, not by 25 cents, up to 25 cents. I'll bet in this, if gas went down to 25 cents a gallon, I too would freak out. What next, Victor? What next? <laughs> Milk above a dollar a gallon? That'd be ridiculous. Never, I'm not paying a penny over a dollar for a gallon of milk. I guess, what, is Malik Willis stock? Malik Willis stock is down, right? Poor Malik Willis. Who did the Titans end up getting? Why am I, why am I blanking on this? Will Levis, that's right, they got Levis. I mean... Devin with the Titans, maybe he gets traded somewhere and then he gets a start and then that card stock goes back up again. There's Young Wei Ku, 65 out of 79. We got a Malcolm Rodriguez to fifty. Mm -hmm. 
Darren Waller to 79. It's still a Raiders edition for Karen. Points. Well, ran oh, that's a decent amount of points, but that usually that usually takes the place of an auto. I don't think I see an auto here. So we'll randomize that to one person in the break. Um, that will be a winner take all if there's more, if there's additional points cards that pop. Jonathan Taylor to 50. And fifth box of 10. Break is actually going a little tiny bit faster than I thought it would. I think it's still going to end up being about a 40 minute break. It's a little bit faster than I thought. I thought this was going to be like a closer to an hour. This might be a little bit faster than that. But that's... Um, deal still stands, ladies and gentlemen. If that flawless break sells out, I'll do it. I don't see a single order, so I don't. Maybe it's not going to happen, but there could be a late night rally. We just need to move that last filler where we're giving away 10 spots, and that's a tonight only promo. And then we need three full spots moving in that Bucks, Pelicans, Kings random number block. That knocks out flawless. And then pick your team five. That's our last case in the store for now. Yeah, maybe, I mean, if nothing's selling out, maybe I could maybe slow down a little bit, take my time a little bit with this break. It's actually getting a little warm in here. This, this, this studio with the lights, can't regulate temperature in this room very well. No, no, it shouldn't be. That's why, Joe Pizzle, I put very specifically, if you had to pick, right? No, we know that it's not going to happen. But if you had to pick, in our latest poll in the YouTube chat, which team has the best chance of coming back from an 0-3 deficit? I don't know, man. I, I'm not that surprised with the Lakers. I mean, listen, they had a great run, but they're... Denver's the number two, the number one seed for a reason. They had the best record in the West for a reason, right? You know, and they started their two games at home. There is no excuse for the Celtics to to drop both games away, both games at home. They were at home. That's the shocking. That was the shocking part. Isaiah Spiller to seventy nine. That's what shocked me. This is I don't I I don't bet on playoff basketball. It's just it's just too crazy. It's Kevin Bird to fifty for Tennessee. If you had to pick, you'd say Boston. Well, the votes are split. Fifty fifty. I mean, it's not gonna happen, but. There's Damian Pierce for the Texans. Right, if this was LeBron, yeah, a 30-year-old LeBron it might be different. Here's Damian Pierce for the Texans. Victor, last spot mojo. There's Brett Favre to 35. That's going to be for the Green Bay Packers. Scott with the Packers. And we got Zach Thomas to 79. Kenny, can you turn that down just a smidge? Thanks. You have, you have a good Zach Thomas story for us? No. Oh. Yeah. The, the giant cross. Giant when cross. When you're on I-40 and you're driving through Texas, there's a gigantic cross that everyone knows. His father was a huge oil mogul, paid for that cross to be put there. Wow. Yeah. 
That's a good... Wow, did everyone hear that? This is a good Zach Thomas story. Uh, apparently, Dad, a big oil man in Texas, and then had uh, built a giant cross on some highway. There you go. Zach Thomas is pop. Zach Thomas was a beast. That dude was seemingly at the end of every single play. The thing is, there's always has to be a team that does it first. True, yes, that is true. But I was looking at those teams now, I wouldn't bet on it. <laughs> That's silver lining, Joe Pizzle. Results still the same. None of, both of our teams did not win a championship. Yeah, if there was a if there was a team that maybe I don't know I don't know how many times where teams looked just completely outmatched and then came back and won a big series. I feel like there were at least some signs, and the teams that have come back from big deficits. C.J. Mosley for the Jets. That'll be for Scott. Now Nuggets look legit. I mean. I have to admit, hands up, you know, hands up. I thought, I thought that, that after the Lakers were able to take care of the outside shooting for the Warriors, I was like, man, we don't have to guard. We just have to guard Jamal Murray. <laughs> Darren Waller for the Raiders. What a, I mean, because I thought, man, if they could, if, if they were able to, to kind of, you know, muzzle Steph Curry and Clay Thompson, you know, and Jordan Poole, and, you know, like, I was like, man, that Denver series, Lakers might have a shot. There's Isaiah Pacheco to 35. So, and I was just like, it'd be awesome, but no, I think the Lakers got punched in the mouth real quick. They had a chance in game two. They were leading by double digits. Or maybe game three. I think game two, they were kind of close. They could have taken one in game game two. Game three, I think they were up by 10. Even at some point in the fourth quarter before the Nuggets rattled off a 13-0 run. Here's Jerome Ford for the Browns. Scott with that one. Cleveland, this is for you. And the Lakers actually split the four-game series with the Nuggets. And that was before the trade deadline, before they kind of transformed their team. So I thought I thought there'd, there'd be a shot there, but no, not looking like it. There's Joe Burrow to 35. You think Celtics getting a win before the Lakers? I don't know. I... I, I I don't know. I don't know about that. Because the Lakers, at least, I feel like they led the last game. They were up by double digits going into, you know, going into the fourth quarter. Have, have the Celtics led in any, led by that much in any game? Maybe game two. I think maybe game two. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Joe Pizzle saying I don't think anyone are going to win a game that makes for better feel better. But yeah, I think that actually, you know what? It's just like let's take, let's just take that racehorse with the broken leg, Joe Pizzle. Let's put the tent up. Let's put these two teams out of their misery. Let's just let's just go. Let's go, let's go right to the finals. <laughs> you know, let's see, let's see Denver and the Heat battle it out. Let's just forget it. Well, the expectations were high for the Celtics, right? 
more than my Lakers. Lakers almost lost. Lakers almost lost to Minnesota. It took overtime. Maybe the Nuggets lay off the gas. I think there were quotes today specifically saying we are not laying off the gas. Yeah, I think the Nuggets are on a mission. Remember, um, in the uh, in the championship in 2020, the Lakers actually beat the Nuggets in the Western Conference Finals. So, you know, I think 2020, 2021. It's Chris Jones is 79. So I think the uh, I think this is a bit of a revenge game for the Nuggets as well. I don't think they're going to take the, their foot off the gas. There's John Mechie the third for Victor and the Texans. Last spot mojo, one of his last spot mojo teams. Had that Damian Pierce earlier too, nice. Yeah, Nick's even managed to. What time is it? Game time. Ray Lewis is 79. Anyone watch uh, anyone watch the golf at all over the weekend? The PGA Championship? How do, how do we... I'm sure you've heard the story by now if you're even a casual golf fan. What a great story. Block? Just a PGA, like a golf pro at a... At a country club here in California, Southern California. There's a Prism Brady, nice. That's going to go to Aaron and the Buccaneers. So he's like 46 years old or something like that. Says he's mo mostly the, the golf instructor at this, at this club. He says he barely hits a full bucket of balls even a week. He does play, play, he does play a lot, but just practice-wise, he just doesn't have the time to go out there. Makes the cut, which is hard enough for an amateur. And then I, I think he shot, I think he was like finished even or one over total, something like that, which is crazy. Michael Parsons, 35. They're tour pros who like finished at plus five or, or higher today. And you got to play around with Rory. Had a hole in one today on the fly. Look that highlight up if you want to see that. It's pretty amazing. There you go. Michael Block, T15, tied for 15th place. He's top 20 finish, which is insane. Impressive. Insane. I mean, he, he, he did better than Masters winner John Rahm. Pretty crazy. An impressive story. Kind of like, kind of like a tin cup feel. Also, I think he qualifies for the next PGA Championship with that top 15 finish, so he's automatic qualifier for next year, which is Valhalla Golf Course, which I think is in Kentucky. I think it's, yeah, it's in Louisville. I think if he had finished just a little bit higher, he might have been an automatic qualifier on uh, in the Masters. LBC, what's going on? He's got 45 wins on the PGA Professional Tour and like 60 seconds in tourneys. Well, not the proper tour though, right? I think like... PG like amateur tour events or something like that. He's not bad, but for him to play with the with the big boys proper, I think it was that's the that's the amazing part.
Here's Tyler Algier for the ATL. That's going to be for Scott, won that spot in the filler. But amazing, uh, an amazing story. Tin cup kind of story. Michael Vick, red, 42 out of 50. All right, what did he make today? His biggest cash was $75,000, which is great, but I mean, it's just relative to what you could get. And today, $288,000 for finishing 15th. Not a, not a bad weekend of work. See that hole in one LBC? There's Devontae Campbell to 79. Yeah, I'd love to see it too. Dunked it, yeah, on the fly. It's Logan Hall to 79. And I love that me, uh, my colleague Nick and his brother and I were on this text chain and we were, we were just like, oh my God, like we loved how, uh, um, and I was, I, was, what was, I was getting ready for work. You know, I was running a little late. I was trying to run out, rush out of the house and, I, and then I, that happened. Like I kind of, didn't think it happened either. I thought for a second, because I, you know, I was kind of watching out of the corner of my eye, and I was watching the shot from afar. You know, maybe I like I was watching on my iPad. It was across the room, and I heard the shot. Kind of turned my head over, and the iPad was a little small. It's, it was across the room, and then people erupted, and I thought, wait, where'd the ball go? I was like, I thought people were cheering because it was like three feet to the cup or something like that. Like he had just nailed it. And maybe the flag or the pin was covering it. Because I, I thought that's where the ball was. And then I was just like, oh my God, that's in the hole. <laughs> Michael, what's going on? Michael Monday's tomorrow, folks. Or is there Michael Monday tomorrow? Noon? Yeah, LBC in the Twitch stream saying we probably won't see something like that again as far as a PGA Pro, or Pro doing that well in a major at such a difficult course, right? It's like a golf pro, you know? All right, yeah, we're going to see Michael Mondays, noon tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. He'll be live a little bit earlier. You might be able to do flawless tomorrow, Michael. That's pretty close to filling. So hopefully people will buy spots now and overnight and in the morning. We are experimenting with a little, uh, going live a little bit earlier. There's Kayvon Thibodeau, nice. Nice little game record here, going to Chris and the Giants, got the Giants straight up. Right, and that course was pretty difficult too. I mean, what, Brooks, was he even double digits? No, he was minus nine. Can he pick it? Steelers, Tristan with the Steelers. Minus nine, that's it. Yeah, I don't think there are very many, many, very many players who ended up under par. It was a very difficult golf course. All right, baby doll, I'm out of here. All right, see ya, Teddy. I'll see you Wednesday. There goes the Ted word, the Teddy Jaspie, riding off into the sunset. It's Terry Bradshaw to 79. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11. That's it, 11 players under par. There's Kevin Birds, 47 out of 50.
I'm in a golf pool that I do every for for all the majors and plus the players. I was not good this week. Not good. None of my top twenty. I think two of my top twenty plays hit. I think that was that was Brooks. I should have been a little more. My money was scared. It was Brooks and Terrell Hatton. Maybe I had top twenty picks. I had a bunch of others that did not happen. Kenny Clark, Packers. I hate betting on golf. The tournaments I do okay, and like the like the pool play, I do decently in. But man, if I try to pick, you know, finishes, outrights or top twenties or whatever, I never get those. Very difficult. Thirty-five Drake London. Do you think Brooks makes the Ryder Cup team? I think if we want to win the Ryder Cup, we should probably, yeah. <laughs> we should probably have Brooks on the Ryder Cup team. I don't think there's been any sort of ruling on that, right? As far as I know, I think the, live, the, the American Live players Excuse me. Are all uh, are all eligible as far as I know? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, someone fact check me on that. Yeah, LB said I didn't really hear. It. Yeah, fact check me on that. But I'm pretty sure that that a either they can, or that an official ruling hasn't been made yet. But my understanding is that it seems like they're leaning yes, because I think the European Ryder Cup team are saying that they're gonna let live players, European live players, play. So I think I think it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well. If they're going to do it, then we should be able to do it, especially the way Brooks is playing. And Brooks shows up for, you know, for like the big, the big tournaments, right? So you know, like, I think if you go to a completely different tournament, you're being paid by a completely different tournament you know, outside of the, you know, outside of the parameters of the PGA Tour, then I don't think he should be playing on the tour. There's Amari Cooper, but this is for country, All right? So this is where, <laughs> where, where the patriotism comes in. And you're like, well, for America. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, go ahead. There's Kenny Pickett. And there's Kair Elam to 50. Well, I don't know if it's, can't really say it's just the, it's just Brooks. I guess, I guess Bryson finished top, I forgot that Bryson finished top five. Good showing for the, for, for the, for the live guys. To 79, Amari Cooper. You think they should both be able to play? At some point, I understand why they're, why they're, you know, at odds, at loggerheads now, but I think at some point they're going to have to work together. And here is Easy E. That's how he signs it, Easy E. He's consistent. Miami, that's going to go to Victor. But at the same time, I, I, how long do you think live lasts? You know, I mean, I don't, I don't know any of my golf sicko friends who are watching live on the CW or the CW app. Some of the elements of live are kind of interesting. I do kind of like the team aspect of it. Maybe PJ should steal that idea for a few tournaments. I do like the team aspect of it. There are some other stuff that's pretty fun, but no one's really watching it. 
Devin McPherson, 35. Will there be, and, and I know that the, the money supply is somewhat endless, but I mean, you know, at the same time, it's also a business. You know, I mean, I suppose they do, but at the same time, you know, I think, I think it's also a business too. They, they, they just don't want to dump money into it. They're business people. They just can't keep paying players $100 million for like zero return. How long can that, how long is that sustainable? But yeah, I mean, I guess, but I mean, even if you're a billionaire though, Scott, wouldn't you just, here, let me get these randomizers set up. If you're a billionaire, wouldn't you just be like, I'll just invest in an F1 team or something like that, which I guess they do already. <laughs> All right, first, everyone gets a shot at the points. That includes everybody. So that's one list. The other list is for the money, right? So the rules are right here. If you buy two teams or if you won teams, as long as you have two teams on the list, that's one entry. Four teams, two entries, six teams, three entries, so on and so forth. Name on top of those entries after the randomizer, winner take all, $500 of break credit. So let's alphabetize, let's make this easy. Let's alphabetize by your first names right here. So Aaron bought two teams, that's an entry. All right, Chris bought four teams, that's two entries. Oh, check that. Chris won teams too, those count as well. That's an extra entry, Chris. That's three entries. So six teams, three entries. Devin won two teams, that's an entry. Jay only has one. Karen got two teams, that's an entry. Michael only has one. Scott won five teams for the purpose of the promo. Four count, that's two entries. Serenity got two teams, that's an entry. Tristan got two teams, that's an entry. Or no, check that, Kristen got, Tristan got five teams for the purpose of the promo, four entry, four teams, two entries. Victor bought uh, four teams, won two teams, that's six entries, six teams, three entries. All right, so I got Aaron, I got Chris, I got Devin, Karen, Scott, Serenity, Tristan, Tristan's two, and Victor's three. All right, so that's a total of 14. That's a one in 14 chance at winning a $500 of break credit. One dice roll for both lists. Fingers crossed, good luck everybody. It's gonna be three and a three, six the hard way. This is for the 900 points, which is a hefty amount of points as well. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So after six times, name on top is... Is Michael, there you go Michael, congrats to you. After six times, three and a three, 900 points going your way. That's a great amount of points. All right, now. $500 of break credit on the line. Three and a three, winner take all. $500 of break credit, name on top after six. Fingers crossed, good luck everybody. One, two, three, four, five, and sixth and final time. After six, Tristan, congrats to you. $500 of break credit going your way. Appreciate you, appreciate everybody getting into this. Pretty solid break. Here's a quick little uh, recap. All card ships, all the stuff that you saw, that's to 10. You'll be getting, there are the 900 points right there. There you go, everybody. That's a break from jazbeescasebreaks.com. You can see it right, right on our logos right here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.